Now, if that didn't show you that the fix is in from Fox News onward, I'd like to know what did. I saw that. I reported it. Because remember, I'm not a reporter like the Wall Street Journal reporter. I am not a journalist. I'm a, an observer and a commentator. Luckily for you, I have great scholarly training so I can analyze things quickly and succinctly describe what I've come, what conclusions I come to, which is why you're listening. In addition, I have a God gift for uh, communication. I also have God's gift of a very quick ability to analyze things and succinctly describe them to you on the run with no script. So I do that. And now we're sitting here watching a nation trying, to, hoping to God it can save itself from the scourge of Barack Obama and his, and his radical leftist fanatical policies before uh, the, the term is up. And Trump is saying the opposite of what uh, uh, Obama's done to the country. The, op the exact opposite, because Trump cares for America. Trump also knows something that Obama doesn't know. See, here's the fundamental crux of it. Trump is a capitalist <clears throat> by inherent training, by his father, by Wharton School. Obama's a communist by inheritance and by learning. So their thinking is 100% different. Everything Obama does is through the lens of attacking the bourgeoisie. Whether he knows it or not, his, chi his optic chiasma is warped. So everything he sees is through a warped pair of glasses. Anything he could do to hurt the middle class, he does. So he opens the borders, decimates the language, denies that there's a culture that defines America. Trump is the opposite. Wants to build a wall to stop the invasion from the Southlands. Wants to stop the flood of uh, Muslim refugees from the Middle East. Wants to protect Christians in the Middle East. Wants to restore Christianity and religion in America. Wants to restore, in other words, the cultural foundation of this nation. Wants to make order out of disorder. Wants to make sense out of nonsense. Because he understands one thing, that that would be good for business. It would make America great again when you think about it. In, that, in other words, if Trump's policies were enacted, it would be good for business, not bad for business. It would be very bad for guys like Microsoft, guys who own Microsoft, guys who own Facebook. They, it would be very bad for them. They may have to, A, they'd have to pay fair share of taxes. They wouldn't be able to get away with keeping their money overseas and using double Irish and double, the double Irish tax uh, scams to pay almost nothing in income taxes. You know, you as a as a uh, a worker know that your federal tax rate's thirty nine percent if you're in the upper brackets. California, the tax rate's thirty nine plus thirteen or fifteen. That's what they're taking from us. Higher than most socialist countries, stealing our earnings, stealing our earnings. Now, if the roads were good, I would, I'd say, okay, I'm getting something for my money. You go drive in San Francisco on Lombard Street. You go drive on the road leading up to the Golden Gate Bridge. You think that you're in some banana republic somewhere in the 1950s. It's astounding what they've done to the state. They've sucked the money right up to the top and distributed it amongst their donors. Wait, so put that on the side. We want this country to be great again. We want the potholes filled. We want ISIS decimated, annihilated. We want them off the planet. We want their weapons taken away. Most of their weapons are our weapons, which they seized. For example, when they seized Mosul, they got a lot of our tanks. Do you know that those bastards are driving M1A Abrams tanks? Did you know that? When they seized Mosul, they took our tanks. Some of the greatest battle tanks in the world are in the hands of these Islamo-fascist throwbacks. Do you know that? Yeah, they're getting very powerful and very dangerous, and Obama is, is uh, doing very little, if anything. Nothing. He could have bombed them when they took over Mosul. He could have taken out their convoy. He did nothing. He's letting them rage. He won't help Jordan fight them. He won't help, help Egypt fight them. He will not help the Kurds fight them. So which side is he actually on? Well, we know which side Trump will be on. We saw him posing yesterday on the Iowa underneath those 16-inch guns. And I got emails from war veterans who are so encouraged all over again to make America great again. When they saw Donald underneath those 16-inch guns, something resonated in them. Something said we just might be able to save the country before it's too late. We just might be able to get out from underneath the vampire in the White House. Well, on those encouraging, positive words, I will take a quick break and be right back on The Savage Nation. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, Barack Obama, the Democrat Party, and the establishment Republicans are all in it together. As you well know, it began, as most moves towards communism have, in the schools, and it took a century to commandeer our educational system from grade schools to our universities. That's what he's done, and the people know it. They may not be able to articulate it as well as I just did, but uh, you know that his administration has tightened its hold on Americans' freedoms by imposing limits on everything from political speech to gun ownership to running a business to how we educate our children. Instead of reinforcing life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Obama's government hacks have invaded our privacy, censored the media, as no administration in our history has ever done, and confiscated and redistributed our wealth in the form of uh, killing taxes. Stalin had his re-education camps. Obama's got the U.S. educational system and the media in his hands. Changes laws, makes laws unilaterally. Compliant Congress sits quietly and does nothing. Not a whimper of regret or opposition to of any substance coming from Congress. You watch their power usurped by another branch, you would think they would uh, fight against him, but they haven't. I don't have to re read the litany of what he has done to this country, what he intends to do before he's out of office. He's opened the floodgates to an invasion from Mexico unlike any ever seen, but if that wasn't bad enough, I mean, you could argue if you wanted to stretch the argument that at least the Central Americans are in the North America, are in the continent. And at least you can say there's some ancestral claims to some of the southern lands. You could stretch that amount to that if you wished. And you could say that there's enough of a cultural similarity between uh, many of these individuals and those in the country that who knows, one day there may be integration. But you can't say the same about the 100,000 Muslims he wants to bring in from Africa and the Middle East. That is being done for one reason and one reason only, and that is because Brussels and Washington are on the same page with regard to this, which is to homogenize the world, to pit race against race, religion against religion, man against woman, woman against man, for one reason. Where do people turn in times of strife? They turn to a government for salvation. And so these crazed, crazed demons in these high places just simply want to aggrandize more power, and the only way to do that is to make people frightened, pit them against each other. When you, when you flood America with 100,000 Muslims from Africa, from the Middle East, Muslims, by the way, that Muslims in Saudi Arabia will not take in. Pay attention, all of you racists out there who are quick to throw the racist word at me. Attention, racist liberals. Attention, racist shoppers. This message is for you. We have a special on the truth right now in the Savage Nation. Racist liberals, pay attention. Muslims in Saudi Arabia have 100,000 air-conditioned tents sitting in the desert. Air-conditioned movie theaters, lavatories. They will not permit one refugee to come in from Syria or Africa. Attention, liberal racist shoppers. Why is it that Saudi Arabia will not let them in? Because they're a threat to the social order. They'll overthrow the country. And so why would Obama want to bring them in? Because they're a threat to the social order, they'll overthrow the country. Which makes it good for Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Hillary Clinton, and the others in the illegal, Ill illegitimate, corrupt Democrat Party machine. Period. I don't have to add to that. I don't have to exaggerate what I see to be true. That's why Trump is surging. Now tonight, of course, you're going to see them try to trip him up. He's too smart for that. And I will argue when the turning point of the American Civil War really began. I will say we're in a civil war. I will say that Obama has conducted a civil war from the day he entered the office. But he is so clever. He and the globalist party are so smart that they've not fired a single shot, have they? Instead, they got minorities to burn Baltimore to the ground. Instead, they got minorities to almost burn Ferguson to the ground. Instead, they got a street rat like Al Sharpton to tell us we need a federalized police force. And now there's a war against white police. Every other day we seem to read about a white policeman being executed somewhere in America. And guess who's killing them? 
It's an embarrassing statement, you racist liberals, but you did it. You did it. You caused this war on the police. And of course, there's only one man, one sheriff who can come along on a white horse and save us. And it's not Debbie Wasserman Schultz Clinton. It's the Savage Nation.